The Extraordinary Adventures of the Newfoundland Dog. G'day guys, how's it going? My name is Ozzy Tash. A particular web series was suggested to me by two of my members on Discord, Eve Kuvec and Lost in the Fog of War. Guys, I'm really looking forward to watching this web series. Thanks for the suggestion. Let's go with the first episode, The Extraordinary Adventures of the Newfoundland Dog. All right, let's go. Midnight, December 1919. A blizzard is raging off the shores of Newfoundland and it has the SS Effie in its grips. All through the night and into the morning, the ship is battered by howling winds and mountainous waves. Snow lashes the crew as they fight to keep the Effie afloat. This is where they lost that battle. The ship ran aground here in what's now Gross Moor National Park. You can still find the wreckage on the beach a century later. Wow. But no one died in the wreck of the SS Effie. And according to legend, that was thanks to one very special dog. This is a true a story. Newfoundland dog. Wow. We don't know how much of the tale is true. Okay. But according to the stories they've been telling for a hundred years, a big mm. Newfoundland swam bravely out to the sinking ship and brought a rope back to shore. The crew was able to send all the passengers to safety along that lifeline, starting with a baby they placed carefully into a mailbag. 92 lives saved by the canine's heroics. Really? The dog was given a touching gift, a brand new silver collar Aww. emblazoned with one big bold word. Hero. Hero. Wow. This is the story of the heroic breed of dog that helped build our country. This is Canadiana. Wow. Just a shout out guys, Canadiana, it's a really, really cool channel. I recommend you go and check out their content. Really looking forward to this web series. Let's keep on going. The Extraordinary Adventures of the New Finland Dog. Guys, how big are these dogs? Jump on in the comments and let me know. Well. By the time the Effie was wrecked, this breed had been living on the island of Newfoundland for centuries. They've been here so long, no one's entirely sure where they came from, oh. how they were first bred or evolved. Oh my gosh, that's super Some cool. say their ancestors were the wild wolves of Newfoundland, or might even have included the domesticated hunting dogs of local First Nations. Others like to say they're descended from big black bear dogs the Vikings brought with them across the Atlantic a thousand years ago. That could be true. And they true. built a settlement here yeah. at Lonso Meadows on the tip of Newfoundland. But most seem to think they were probably bred by the first European fishermen and whalers to come to Canada. Okay. Sailors from places like the Basque country who spent their summers fishing the waters oh. off the shores of Newfoundland beginning wow. in the early 1500s, establishing seasonal ports, like one here at Red Bay in Labrador. Wow, that footage is incredible. Absolutely incredible. These dogs were Hello. perfect for life on the frontier. Oh. They're big and strong <laughs> and brave, smart and loyal. Oh, look at them, they they're so feet beautiful. They have thick waterproof coat, so they're fantastic swimmers. Mm. Like their cousins, the St. Bernards, they're famous for rescuing people. Wow. And when European explorers and settlers first ventured beyond the East Coast, heading deep into the continent, the dogs were there at their side. Wow. A Newfoundland named Jack Sharp was here on the Niagara frontier with Lieutenant Governor John Graves Simcoe as he set sail across Lake Ontario to found the city of Toronto. Okay. Another hauled sleds through the wintry wilds of Manitoba with the famous fur trader David Thompson dodging polar bears on the shores of Hudson Bay. And a third crossed the Rockies with Alexander Mackenzie warning yeah. the party when wolves drew near as the Scottish explorer became the first European ever to cross North America. Oh my gosh! Newfoundlands had traveled all the way from their East Coast home to the far side of the continent. And in the decades to come, these hardy dogs would become them. a familiar sight for Canadian settlers. Absolutely. A breed that helped build this country, embedded in the national imagination. And just a couple of decades after the shipwreck of the Ethi, another Newfoundland dog would make an even more dramatic rescue. His name was Gander. He was the mascot of the Royal Rifles of Canada, named after the Newfoundland town where the unit was stationed. 
And when the soldiers headed off to war, they brought their canine companion oh, with them. Wow. He even got a promotion. He was now Sergeant Gander. Sergeant Gander, that's super cool. The Royal Rifles had been sent to Hong Kong, and the day after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese invaded the British colony. It was the first time Canadian forces had fought a land battle in the entire war, and they were outnumbered four to one. Hold on, did Gander go with them to Hong Kong? That is super, super cool. These dogs from Newfoundland, the Newfoundland dog, they have played an incredible part in Canadian history, haven't they? Absolutely incredible. Guys, leave a comment. Do you have a Newfoundland dog? They look so huge, so cute. Their web feet, that would be really, really cool for swimming. These stories are absolutely incredible. What a huge part they have played in the history of Canada. Fantastic. And that footage, the footage of Newfoundland, the port, the coastline, just incredible. And the statues of the dogs, they looked really, really tall. I'm guessing they're lifelike too. Oh my gosh, I am loving this tale so much. But they had Sergeant Gander on their side. He helped fight off three assaults, one after the other. As the instincts bred into him through his ancestors kicked in. And when a grenade was tossed at a group of Canadian soldiers, he leapt to their defense. What did he do? Sergeant Gander raced out, picked up the grenade, what? and carried it away from his comrades. Oh my gosh, are you serious? The enemy, his final act of bravery. Oh no. He gave his life to save seven Ooh. men. Sergeant Gander was awarded his own medal for gallantry. And here at the Hong Kong Veterans Memorial Wall in Ottawa, you'll find his name included among oh. all the other Canadians who died in that oh, bloody look battle. Oh, that. Oh, that's so Today, amazing. Today, Sergeant Gander still keeps watch over his hometown. Oh. This statue was erected in the heart of Gander just a few oh. years ago. And the day it was unveiled, they used the same word to describe him they've used for so many Newfoundlands over oh. the years. They called this dog a hero. Absolutely. That's incredible, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Sergeant Gander, he gave his life to save his soldiers. How did he know his instinct? He knew that hand grenade was bad. So he picked it up and he just ran away. He ran in the opposite direction. In his final act, he saved seven soldiers. Sergeant Gander, oh my gosh, that is just an incredible, extraordinary tale. Guys, if you enjoyed that, please jump on, smash the like button, leave a comment, and remember to subscribe. That really helps me out. Take care. Bye.